In today's video, we're going to be focusing in on a lot of our tropical activity. We have some potential development being picked up on the models. We will also be going over the entire pattern for the lower 48, so rest assured this video will be for everyone, of course, but there is just some elevated chances of tropical activity that we need to discuss today. So let's just dive into things, and we will be taking a look at our normal European model run first things first, and then diving a little bit more into the tropical side of things later on, although we do see some of it here on this model, so we will really dive into things pretty quickly. Uh, now, as we just keep going here... Uh, I want to take us straight towards tomorrow afternoon to start things out. And what we're seeing here is plenty of activity still ongoing from this storm that we've had ongoing for quite a while. Uh, for a lot of your deeper south, southeast, and mid-Atlantic areas, I'm sure a lot of you can't wait for me to stop saying that probably at this point, uh, as I've said that for so many days now. Uh, we do see that there is a lot of precipitation along the Rockies and Northern Plains as well. Kind of all underneath a stronger storm system that is located here in Western Canada. Uh, so that is pretty associated here, I'd say, especially with this area over the Northern Plains. Again, all of that tomorrow on Friday. Let's just move towards Saturday on the 27th. And we see, again, the Southeast Corridor is seeing some storminess, but it has died down quite considerably from its peak. Um, we do see that over the Rockies. And for a lot of the Plains, we are continuing to see uh, some thunderstorms firing up as we are kind of in the heart of their thunderstorm season out west. Sunday on the 28th of July here, we see that we get a little bit of an expanded area of storms here in the southeast, but it really is uh, for a lot of the Midwest and Ohio Valley where we're seeing a surge for this kind of Sunday 28th time frame during the afternoon, so a little bit later on this upcoming weekend. We could have some stronger thunderstorms here across the Midwest, deeper south, and even for some of the southeast ongoing. The east coast, unless you're in Georgia or Florida, is for the most part uh, spared, as you can see. Now, we also have some plains uh, thunderstorms still ongoing by this point, and I have to mention it, some low pressure offshore of the mid-Atlantic and northeast, kind of eyeballing some chance of development there. Um we see it really start out uh, fairly soon here, uh, Friday into Saturday. We see this activity here try to develop into some low pressure before it moves up northward. We will see little, later on that we're looking at the percentages from a lot of these models. We do actually have some chance of development with this one, believe it or not, according to those models. We actually get some thunderstorm and probably windy activity for New England due to this system. Now, as we move towards Monday afternoon on July 29th, what we're seeing here is plenty of thunderstorms all the way from the upper Midwest, Great Lakes, Ohio Valley, Southeast here, and surrounding areas. I would say a lot of areas that are east of the plains here are seeing chances of thunderstorms, and even for some of the plains themselves, chances of thunderstorms will be pretty high for the beginning of next week. We do see some precipitation for the southwest of Canada and the northwest of the United States. Kind of this corner here is going to be a place to watch. As we keep going towards Tuesday afternoon on July 30th, we see thunderstorms are really, really picking up and prevailing here. Now along the eastern seaboard especially. So again, that's going to be for Tuesday of next week on the 30th. By the time we reach Wednesday here on July 31st, we see these thunderstorms really continuing to take hold for the east coast so again nothing like what we've been seeing for the past couple of weeks which has been a little bit more on the extreme side as far as precipitation however this is uh quite active uh regardless and and definitely something to keep our eyes on um for a couple of days here at least already by thursday we're seeing kind of the tail end of it as we have still some east coast activity also some midwest activity uh, but it is on the downturn here Friday, we're not, re not even really seeing it show up anymore. So we have some isolated activity for the eastern seaboard, as there always kind of is for this time of year, but nothing in particular. Also, the upper Midwest and Great Lakes seeing some of this thunderstorm activity once again. Here is tropical disturbance number two, which is kind of silently moved into the Bahamas area. Uh, overall, uh, kind of that northern Caribbean. And it wants to take aim at Florida as of now, but you guys know what I always say. The specifics aren't really crucial right now. We're seeing the early August time frame as a favorable period. And I think that that's the most realistic takeaway that we can get from these models as of right now. 
However, they keep kind of wanting to show this southeast area uh, really, really get uh, some activity of some sort uh, around the Bahamas, or around Florida, potentially expanding up the east coast. Obviously, there's a lot of time and, and there's a lot of things that can really change, but we see an active period and they really want to show something moving into this pocket kind of north of Cuba. So we will be watching in that for that in particular. We can get to Saturday here where we see this develop even further and become stronger in the Bahamas, as they tend to do. Uh, we have some thunderstorms still for some of the Midwest, still for some of the Southeast, even outside of our storm here. Uh, and definitely going to be an interesting situation as we see it kind of take a northern turn here from the Bahamas, straight up the east coast of Florida there, uh, where we're really going to be watching the Carolinas if that was a case, or was the case. But again, so much time and the specifics aren't too important. Uh, I'd say the most important detail that we actually can kind of take away is just the, the favorability for development that we see here is this does drop lower and lower in pressure um, here over time. So definitely this model is eyeballing some favorable times ahead. And that is something that these models do get right in the long range. Now for the total precipitation, uh, we do get a major storm moving offshore of the Carolinas. We get a major storm moving towards the Southeast here. And you can see those paths here on the total precipitation. But outside of that, we also get a kind of active Midwest area here, as you can see, and then still the Southeast, although this is uh, kind of receded from what we've seen previously. And when we look at the anomalies, again, we see above average where these two potential tropical cyclones move through right there. And then also for a lot of your Southeast corner of the nation, as well as some of the upper Midwest and Northern Plains, rather below average though, for most of the plains, the Great Lakes in the Northeast here. Uh, for the next uh, about 15 days. As we take a look here at your European AI model, again, we're gonna be watching the first couple of days of August for something to break into the Caribbean here of some sort uh, past our MDR, uh, which is gonna be this area here. We see many, many tropical disturbances move into this year every year, potentially hundreds some years. Uh, we see just disturbances after disturbances after disturbances moving through here and that is really going to be a very active area, but usually we see shear or dust kind of break them up. Either the dust from Africa here or the shear from your ENSO moving uh, kind of uh, in contrast against these storms. There's a lot in the way of these storms developing. That's why we have, again, you know, 50, 100, 150 disturbances every year in here. Uh, and really, we only see a fraction of those actually develop. And that's because of all of these things holding these storms back. So just for a second, imagine if we didn't have the dust from Africa or we didn't have the strong shear coming from the Pacific. Um, scary thought, scary thought. Uh, every year would be just, you know, way worse than anything we've ever seen if that was the case. But thankfully, we live in the real world and none of that, you know, those things do protect us, thankfully. We do see that there is uh, plenty of systems. We will see this again moving across this MDR area, but they basically break up before they make it into here until the early August time frame. So there we go. We see them kind of struggling. Um, when we get one to break through here right around August 1st. So here it is uh, just north of Puerto Rico. And we're going to see it take almost the same exact track as your European normal model. Again, it's the AI one. The previous one was your normal European model. And this one moves straight into the Bahamas, uh, right up against the east coast of Florida, and then wants to strike kind of the outer banks before moving kind of offshore of the east coast. Very, very interesting. Uh, and another thing is just after this, we get another one to break through, um, wants to move into the southern Caribbean. So we have number one up here, number two down below so very active tropics all of a sudden and i think i mentioned to you guys that it would be like this because it's really the heart of the saharan dust season and actually i didn't plan on doing this but i do want to uh, kind of take a look at this with you guys although we only get to july 30th here on this but what we see currently is very strong areas of this dust as you can see in your mdr area so they can't get into here because there's too much dust in the path that they have to take. Now, what ends up happening is we get kind of rid of some of those yellows and whites, and we end up with just some purples, which definitely can hold back some development. But a storm could probably move through this pretty easily and find periods of good development in here uh, at times. And that's the big difference. So 
usually july june july time is the peak of this dust season as we call it and as we move into very early august usually it's like a light switch and it just gets turned off and that's why suddenly we typically see a lot of activity in august september time frame but this year's a little different we have historic temperatures out there in the atlantic we have record low shear due to a la nina that is developing and really, it is just uh, a green light for a lot of these tropical systems to just go ahead and develop, unfortunately. So the dust is the only factor that has really saved us to this point, if you can even say that. We did have uh, Hurricane Burl, Major Hurricane Burl there, uh, which definitely uh, played a role. Or it was a Hurricane Barrel. I was always saying it wrong. Either way, Major Hurricane Barrel, Major Hurricane Burl. Uh, you know, you don't see a, you know that strong of a storm that early uh, almost ever and especially in those areas and i think that that should be a warning sign as to what to expect for this entire season as a whole and many forecasters including myself but many other forecasters as well across you know um even the national hurricane center have basically put out warnings that this hurricane season uh, could be very very bad and it likely will be honestly as we take a look real quickly at the tropical depression probabilities from this European and Salva model, uh, the important thing is to kind of look at these different areas. Um, we see that that East Coast potential one here. We do see some probabilities where this model is indicating 30 to 40 percent chance of tropical depression status. Uh, sometimes it does pick up on some weird things, so take this with a grain of salt. But I think that this does have a little bit of potential. I think if we do see this system move into this kind of Bahamas area, this one would have far more potential. Right now we're reading a th uh, 30 to 40 percent chance could be a lot more than that if we actually do see it move into there and then we get a southern caribbean one here as well where this model shows a lot higher percentage maybe even some systems behind it where we'll be watching some systems form out here in the main development region uh either way we can count a handful of potential areas to watch here whereas just a week or two ago there was nothing to even look into so huge huge shift here in the hurricane season we're going to keep you guys up to date for the entire season so be sure to subscribe as we do upload every single day you can even hit the bell icon for daily notifications when we upload so you never miss one be sure to like the video if you did enjoy it leave a comment down below and i'll see you guys in the next video